Good evening, Faith Baptist Church family. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in once again uh, to our evening service here at Faith Baptist Church. I encourage you to uh, take your Bibles and turn to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6, uh, we're going to be doing a, uh, a, a mini-series in this area of spiritual importance, the armor of God. I've entitled this series Body Armor, and uh, we're going to look at the importance of spiritual armor and why Paul the Apostle spent the time to encourage us to take on and to put on the whole armor of God. If you have your Bibles, I would encourage you to turn to Ephesians chapter 6, and as you're turning there, I want to remind folks that we have begun gathering again safely as a church family. Uh, currently, uh, we are only gathering in the morning service, uh, both in the 10 a.m. and the 11 a.m. hour. Both of those slots are the exact same. So we're encouraging folks just to maintain the, the requirements set forth by the county uh, for social distancing and limited capacity. If you would choose either the 10 a.m. or the 11 a.m. service, we've made it more convenient for uh, families with maybe small children. I know how that is to make it at the 11 o'clock hour. And if that's more convenient for you, praise the Lord, come on out, come by at 11 o'clock. But uh, again, we'll be gathering again this next Sunday at 10 a.m. and 11 a.m. And both of those services will be um, the same. So you can choose one or the other, uh, both at 10 a.m. and 11 a.m. All right, if you have your Bible, go ahead and turn to Ephesians chapter 6. I'm looking forward to uh, studying the, this important topic of spiritual armor and uh, why it's important for Christians and uh, what, we, what, what is at stake, really, uh, when, we, when we neglect this uh, spiritual armor. If you have your Bible, turn to Ephesians chapter 6. I'll read the first few verses here. Uh, the Word of God says in, in verse 10, we'll begin in verse 10, Finally, my brethren, be strong... In the Lord. That's key. That's key. Paul the Apostle says, finally, in other words, this is the last thing I'm going to leave with you before I, before I finish this letter. He says, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. He said, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against ru the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness, in high places. Then he goes on to explaining the armor of God, and we'll look at that as the weeks go on. But I want us to take this first, this first week and, and understand the foundational truth that our strength comes from God and God alone. Let's have a word of prayer, and then we'll jump into the message tonight. Lord Jesus, I pray for your <laughs> guiding strength. I pray for the Holy Spirit's opening of our eyes to see the importance of spiritual armor. May we appropriate it by faith. Uh, may we understand that we have an enemy out there that wants nothing more than to destroy our lives. And may we, by faith, appropriate the spiritual armor in our life that we would be able to stand, that we would be able to resist, that we would be able to um, with, 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 withstand the, the, the wiles of the devil. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Unfortunately, uh, this truth is a sad truth, that, uh, but it is true that many Christians, uh, many Christians live uh, lives of constant and continual uh, spiritual defeat. Uh, in other words, uh, many Christians find themselves kind of in a pattern of, of falling to uh, pray to the wiles of the devil and to the world and the flesh and the devil and all the things that the world has to offer. And, and they, they live a defeated life. That's not what God had planned for us as Christians. God said, Jesus said, I'm come that they might have life and that might have it more abundantly. Unfortunately, some people kind of uh, think that the Christian life, because God has offered us and wants us to have the abundant Christian life filled with joy, uh, sometimes we think that that means that there's not going to be any tribulations or trials. That's the, it couldn't be farther from the truth. Uh, Paul the Apostle says, all those who will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. God wants us to have joy, but God even wants us to have joy even through the difficulties and the trials. Uh, sometimes people advertise Christianity as like, come to Jesus, he'll solve all your problems. While Jesus does ultimately solve all of our problems in himself and through the blood of Jesus Christ, and that we are no longer dead, it, it, we are no longer dead, but we are, we are alive in Christ and we have eternal hope uh, in heaven. But the truth is, we're on this earth as we, suffer, as we go through this pilgrimage of earth, we're going to suffer persecution. 
Jesus said, I've come to give you life and I've given you more abundantly. But Jesus has also told us that he says, I'm going to send you as sheep in the midst of wolves. He says, be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Jesus said, I have spoken unto you that, ye, that in me ye might have peace. But then he says this, he says, in the world ye shall have persecution. Be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Jesus wanted us to see that God wants us to have joy. God wants us to have peace. God wants us to have a life that is fulfilled and an abundant life. But in this life, there's going to be tribulation. There's going to be difficulty. Uh, Sometimes Christians naively uh, live out their lives neglecting to remember that we have an enemy out there that is actively seeking to destroy our lives. These last few months, we have talked a lot about uh, COVID-19, coronavirus. Uh, They've become household words, uh, things that at the beginning of this year we probably didn't even know existed. Uh, And now it's uh, you, uh, if somebody says COVID or Rona or anything like that, you know exactly what they're talking about. One phrase that our government officials have been talking about as they go through and seek to fight this deadly virus is uh, this idea of an invisible enemy. An invisible enemy. I think what made uh, coronavirus so um, uh, dangerous and so uh, scary at times was that it wasn't an enemy, uh, foreign or domestic, that you could uh, could see or you could see the effects of easily. It was a silent and an invisible, uh, deadly uh, enemy that was out there. And um, in, in, in a small way, uh, Paul the Apostle is reminding us as Christians that we ourselves have an enemy out there. And you might say, okay, well, I'm, I'm going to put on this armor. What? Show me my enemy. Show me. His. He says, we don't fight flesh and blood. There is spiritual warfare going on in this world that is seeking to destroy our lives. Uh, the Word of God tells us, uh, Peter says, he says that there is an enemy who goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Satan's desire is to destroy your life. And there is an invisible enemy out there. And Paul wants us to understand the reality of this enemy. If we are going to stand fast, if we are going to stand strong, for the Lord Jesus, if we are going to appropriate the spiritual armor in our lives, we first need to know your enemy. Paul the Apostle says that we do not wrestle, we do not fight against flesh and blood. There is an invisible enemy out there. There are principalities, there's powers, there's rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. The world, the world system of belief and thinking, Satan and his um, armies are out there to destroy Christians' lives. And it is important for us as Christians to be reminded of this. I want to ask you, it's a rhetorical question, think it through in your own heart and mind. When was the last time you said to yourself, or you even thought to yourself, or had a word of prayer, um, and thought about the fact that there is a spiritual warfare going out all around the world? When was the last time you stopped and thought to yourself and asked the Lord to give you strength over the spiritual wickedness in this world? Uh, sometimes we have problems that are going on in our lives and, and we try to solve them um, here and now in the physical realm. Uh, if there's a relationship issue, we might just boom, put, you know, I'm, I'm going to fix this. I'm going to, I'm going to do what I have to do. I'm going to read a, a self-help book or whatever it is. And I'm just going to fight this. Um, sometimes we can either go on two extremes. Either one extreme is everything is spiritual. In other words, anything that happens in our life is, uh, is some kind of spiritual warfare. And I think that might be a dangerous side to be on. The other side is to completely disregard it. And I think as Americans, I think as Christians, sometimes we find ourselves on that area of disregarding the spiritual warfare. Uh, Paul says we need to have the armor of God in our lives. We need to put on the armor of God. But if we're going to do that, we need to, we need to have this understanding of who our enemy is. Next, we need to know not just our enemy, we need to know our weaknesses. 
if you understand that the foe that we are facing against, the, 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 the one that is the, the, the spiritual wickedness in this world that's seeking to devour our lives, we must, as Christians, be reminded of our weakness. Now, before I, I talk about this, and before I talk about um, uh, fighting or standing against the wiles of the devil, I think it's vitally important for us to remember Paul the Apostle speaking to Christians. He says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Friend, if we are not in the Lord, we are never ever going to be able to withstand or fight or stand in uh, against the, the, the wiles of the devil. We're never going to withstand uh, spiritual darkness in this world if we are not in Christ. Paul the Apostle spent the entire first part of, of, of Ephesians laying out the glorious truths of the gospel. In, in, in Ephesians uh, chapter 2, he, verse 8 and 9, very familiar verses, he says, For by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Friend, if you have never by faith put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone, the rest of this message is not really going to help. Because we must first be in Christ if we are going to be in the Lord and stand strong in the power of His might. But we need to know, know our enemy. Our enemy is the devil who seeks to destroy us, the spiritual wickedness in this world. But we need to know our own weaknesses. The truth is, we cannot in our own strength resist Satan. We cannot in our own strength uh, fight against the devil. Uh, James says with it, we are to submit ourselves therefore to God, resist the devil and he'll flee from us. Some Christians just take off the submit ourselves to God and say, bless God, I'm going to fight, I'm going to fight the, the devil. Friend, that's not going to work. Paul the Apostle is again reminding brethren to be strong, not in our own strength. He says to be strong in the Lord. Jesus taught uh, uh, using this analogy of, of the vine and, the, and uh, the, the branches. And he says, he says, he says, without me, you can do nothing. Christian, do we really believe that? Uh, we cannot truly grow in the area of spiritual warfare or battling against spiritual warfare until we realize that we daily need to depend upon God's grace in our lives. Do we understand our weakness? Do we understand our shortcomings? Uh, sometimes, and this is not rocket science here, but we as Christians know where Satan is e can easily trip us up. We know the temptations that seem to, 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 to get us in trouble. Okay. There's some things that Satan might tempt us with. It's not much of a temptation. But we know those besetting sins. Have we, by God's grace, put some, put some guards around in our life? Uh, by God's grace, uh, put some accountability around our life. Have we, have, we, have we acknowledged our weaknesses? Have we acknowledged our own pride? See, our pride says, I got this. I can figure this out. I can handle this. I can do this in my own. We need to understand our weakness. We need to understand who our enemy is. But lastly today, and most importantly, we need to know his strength. We need to understand that it is God's strength and God's strength alone that we stand strong in. Uh, Paul the Apostle, he did not say, uh, be strong in your own personality, be strong in your experience, be strong. He says, no, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Because there is an enemy out there that wants to destroy your life. There's an enemy out there that is actively trying to destroy your marriage. There's an enemy out there that wants to rob your children of their joy. There is an enemy out there that is trying to destroy everything in your life. And if you're going to withstand, if you're going to have a battle stance of resistance towards the, this world, and, and, and I, you, don't have to, you don't have to be a, a rocket science. You turn on the news for a little bit right now. Our country is in, uh, is in troubled times. Our country desperately needs the love of Christ. Our country, our world needs to know the Savior. And don't tell me that Satan is enjoying the division and the, the chaos and all of the, all of the mayhem that seems to be going on. You turn on the news and it's a little bit depressing right now. But can I say this? Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. 
Yes, we're going to suffer tribulation. Yes, we're going to have persecution. But Jesus says, I have overcome the world. We need to understand that the same God who created the heavens and the earth by his voice is the one who can solve your problems. Do we really believe that? Do we understand the vast strength of the Lord? We're not going to run to a God who we do not, understand, do not believe is strong enough to take care of our problems. Countless times throughout the scripture, God seemed to be, uh, it seemed to be important enough to, to, be re, to remind his children that, hey, yes, this situation seems impossible, but don't forget with God, all things are possible. We have a God who can overcome this wickedness in this world. We have a God who can uh, get, bring peace. We have a God who can solve our problems. I love what Proverbs chapter 18, verse 10 says. It says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. Friend, this idea of finding our strength in the Lord is something that we cannot do in ourselves. In other words, I cannot in my own strength muster up the courage to withstand or resist or stand in the, in the, in the evil day against the wiles of the devil. It comes from God. But, but Proverbs kind of gives this idea. It says the name of the Lord. In other words, God is our strong tower. He's the one that we can run to as refuge for, for strength. He's the one that we can run to for protection and safety. You know what happens though? We as Christians, we're being pummeled by the world and the, 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 the fiery darts of the wicked are, are impaling us and we, we, we are finding ourselves defeated and defeated and defeated. And God is saying, come to me and I will give you rest. Come to me. And we are not running to the Lord in those times. We are not finding strength in the Lord. We just say, I'm going to try to fix it out myself or I'm going to find myself undefeated. Friend, that's not God's design. He says, come, all you that are uh, uh, heavy laden, and I will give you rest. We must know the strength of our God. Some people believe that the Christian life is kind of this um, let go and let God. That's not in Scripture. Uh, there's this tension be between uh, resting in 100% of God's sovereignty and power in our lives, and at the same time, it's man's responsibility. Paul the Apostle in, in Colossians chapter 1 says this, Whereunto I also labor, striving according to His working, which worketh in me mightily. I love the statement. Paul the Apostle says, I, I'm working, I'm striving the work that's in me through the strength that God gives me, His might that's working through me. Uh, I remember a, a, a preacher once said, Paul knew what it was like to live by faith and by the strength of the Lord. But when he put his head on his pillow at night, he was tired. What does that mean? Paul labored for the Lord. He, he, he strove for the Lord, but he did it in God's strength, not in his own strength. Paul the Apostle says there is an enemy out there. There is, a, there is an enemy out there, and you cannot do it in your own weakness. You need God's strength. And so Paul uses this graphic illustration of armor. He says you need to put on the whole armor of God. And the, and the next few weeks, we're going to look at these individual pieces of the armor and why they're so important, each one, why they're so important in our own lives. But can I give you this, this big picture? Paul the Apostle in Romans chapter 13 says this, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? He says that you would make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Friend, Paul the Apostle says, put on the Lord Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit of God says, put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? That you wouldn't fulfill the lust of the flesh. That you wouldn't succumb to the wiles of the devil, the temptation that is in, uh, in this world. That you wouldn't uh, fulfill the lusts in our hearts, in our minds. Does that sound a little bit familiar? The truth is, this exposition of the armor of God is, can be summed in this. Christ himself is our armor. He is our strength. He is our source of hope. We're going to talk about a belt or, or loins girt about with truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life. 
He is our breastplate of righteousness. He is the the very gospel of peace that we stand on and we preach to this world. He is the shield of our faith. But Jesus said, looking at Hebrews chapter 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. He is the helmet of our salvation, and he is the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. John chapter 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Friend, the spiritual armor that we want in our lives is the Lord Jesus Christ. It is a daily appropriation of by faith saying, God, I need your strength today. Christian, do you find yourself defeated? Do you find yourself getting tripped up over the same things again and again and again? You never seem to be growing in your spiritual growth. You have a desire, you want to. It seems like Satan is just defeating you and just pressing you down and pressing you down. That is not God's design for your life. Jesus says, I've overcome the world. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Christian, it's time for us to, by faith, appropriate that truth and say, God, by your strength, by your grace, I'm asking you to give me victory over this darkness that's in my life right now. It is daily appropriating, by faith, the armor that God wants in our lives. It is asking for cry and deliverance and strength from him. Christian, Friend, we're never going to run to God, our strength, if we do not, A, believe that there's a problem, and we do not believe that he is strong enough to take care of that problem. May God, through his Holy Spirit, open our eyes to see the spiritual wickedness that is around this world. And may God, by the Holy Spirit, press in our hearts our need for his strength, And may we run to that tower. God, with open arms, is inviting us, wants us to to appropriate this spiritual armor. May we put it on that we might be able to withstand. May we have a defensive and stance against the devil, against the wiles of this world. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, We acknowledge our weakness. We acknowledge your strength. We acknowledge the reality of an enemy in this world. But Lord, may we never forget. May we never forget that our strength does not come from ourselves. It does not come from our our environment. It comes from you, Lord. May you give us the strength to be able to stand. Lord, may we appropriate the armor of God. We know that it comes from you. It's not something we can we can go to a store to purchase. It is coming from you, Lord. You are our source of strength. But may we actively put it on. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ that we would not fulfill the lust of the flesh. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.